Um, good day. So for week six, we have oblique triangles. Um, remember that uh, in the first uh, part of midterms, um, the topics that we discussed, um, well, about angles. So we do started with um, the right triangle. OK, so with the right triangle, remember that in order for us to solve for the unknown um, parts of the right triangle, so it can be the, the sides, the angle. So what we do, so we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. We can apply the trigonometric functions. So if ever that the, um, the angle is the unknown, so we can apply the inverse trigonometric functions. And also with the right triangle, so we also discussed um, the applications such as the angles of elevation and the pressure and then also bearing. So remember that when it comes to the bearing problem, so it is not always um, it is not always a problem in which you can just come up with a right triangle. So with the bearing, so you need to see to it that you have a triangle and you do need to check if it is right. So once that you do have a right, tri uh, a right triangle, that's the time that you can apply the concepts that we, uh, we discussed, okay? So like the Pythagorean, the trigonometric, the inverse or whatever is applicable. And then, um, for the topic that you can see on the screen, the oblique triangles. So here we also have the application which is also on bearing. So later um, we do have example for this, but then um, for this topic, so what are the subtopics? So we have, well, what is an oblique triangle? And then what are the conditions that determine a triangle? And then um, we also have the law of signs. Then the ambiguous case, um, followed by the law of cosines, and then the application of oblique triangles. Okay, so for the first, the definition of an oblique triangle. So the oblique triangle, so it is a triangle that has no right angle. Okay, so remember that a triangle has, um, has three angles. And if ever that one angle measures 90 degrees, therefore the triangle is considered to be right. But if ever that none of the three angles measure, um, well, measure 90, okay, none, none of the angle measure 90, therefore the triangle is said to be oblique. So you can see on the illustration here, so that, um, well, you can see all acute angles, okay, of this um, oblique triangle. So this is considered to be oblique. So you just take a look at the, well, the black um, lines, um, the sides of the triangle, and then it's be uh, it's base. So, so with this um triangle, okay. So it is said that um a description or a characteristic of an oblique triangle is that what? So all angles are acute. So as what you can see, so this triangle, of course. So we have here um well one angle. So it is less than 90. Also on this portion, this is also less than 90. And then this one also is also less than 90 degrees. Okay, all of the said angles are considered to be acute. And with this um, triangle, so we can say that this is oblique. Okay, so when will it happen that you can have a right triangle with this? 
So simply, you're just going to, um, well, to split the triangle into two, and that's the time that you can form a right triangle, okay? So you can see it here. But then considering the whole triangle, um, this is an oblique triangle. And then this is also another one. So as what you can see, so we do have here the sides. So this portion, okay, so this is one side and this is also another side and this is also another side. Um, as what you can see, so this is acute. This angle is acute. Also on the upper portion, it is also acute angle. And then on this, um, well, on the lower right, we do have here, um, an angle that is in between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, which is considered to be obtuse. Okay. So this um, triangle on the right side is also an example of oblique triangle. Okay. So these are the two general forms of oblique triangle. By the way, this, um, well, this um, lecture can be found in the handout in math, okay, in the resources in LMS. Okay, so what are the conditions that determine a triangle? Okay, so in order for us to solve an oblique triangle, okay, so you need to know the measure of at least one side. OK, and then that any two parts of the triangle should also be given. So if you try to um, think of it, so this means that um, in order for us to solve an oblique triangle, so we need to have one side and then any, any of the parts of the triangle, OK, any two. So it means that with one side, we can have a combination of um, one side and another side. Or we can have um, one side and then one angle. Okay. Um, it is also possible that um, we can have one angle and another angle. OK, because it is um, it is said that any two parts of the triangle. Remember that the parts of the triangle, we do have three sides and then three angles. OK, and um, in solving the the triangle, so possible that the combination of the given parts can be like this. So the ASA, so it means that we are given two angles and one side. As what I meant, uh, as what I mentioned um, earlier, so we can have there um, one side and then uh, two, two thetas, two angles, and then the next one we do have the SSA, or um, two sides, and an angle that is opposite one of uh, one of the given sides, and. Um, we have the third, so possible that we can be given the SSS or three sides. So remember, in order for us to solve an oblique triangle, so the first is we need to uh, we need to know the measurement of one of the sides, and then any any parts, any two parts of the triangle. So it can be two sides also. So we can have three sides all in all. And then um, the fourth is SAS, so that is having two sides and an angle that is included or that is in between the said two sides. Okay. So if we have ASA and SSA, so how are we going to solve the said oblique triangle? So we can make use of, well, so for this, so we do have the law of signs. By the way, the law of signs is only, um, it can uh, be used for the ASA and the SSA. So um, later, 
Um, I will give you the formula for this so you would really notice that it is important that you do have two angles and one side given or two sides and an opposite um, angle given. And then if we do have three sides and then uh, two sides and the angle that is um, in between the said two sides, so we can make use of the law of cosines. So these are the two ways on how we can solve an oblique triangle, depending on the given. OK, so since we already uh, mentioned the law of sines and then the law of cosines um, in, uh, well, um, in solving an oblique triangle, OK? So for the law of sines, so this is the formula. Um, it is A, so A here, the small A here is side. So this is side. So side, um, so we do have sides A, B, and the um, C, okay? Then for the angle, so for the angles, we do have angle A, angle B, and angle C. We make use of the big letters. For the sides, we do use the small letters. So you can see in the law of sines that um, the formula is um, side A over sine of angle A equals to side B over sine of angle B equals to side C over sine of angle C. It can also be written this way, okay? So you can just um, interchange the numerator and denominator, but then see to it that you're going to do the same with the B and C. OK, so how do we use this uh, formula? OK, um, by the way, we do not. Well, use this um, three. Um, the A, B and C all at once. So you're just going to choose a pair. So it can be A and B, it can be B and C, or it can be A and C, depending on the given and depending on what is being asked in the problem. OK, so possible that you can have, um, you can consider, for example, you can just consider um, the A over sine of angle A equals to side B over sine of angle B. OK, um, this is when um, see that we do have given A and B and then we are given um, a big A. OK, the angle A and then you are being asked of the, of course, um, angle B. So as what you can see, um, two sides are given, the A and the B, and then angle A is also given, and then one angle is um, being asked. So you, you would also notice that this is also pairing. So if we have, um, well, if, if we are given two letters, OK, a small and a big. So this is uh, this two are actually um, well pair. So you would notice that one of the given, OK, you have to pair it with the other, which is the unknown. So it doesn't matter if um, the given is a small letter or a big letter or side and angle as long as you can have the pairing. OK, it is also the same if you have um, if you would like to consider, for example, sine B. Sine angle B, OK, sine angle B over B equals um, say we have um, sine um, angle C over side C. So you you would notice that this is from this one, OK? Um, if you would like to write this as, um, well, as B, side B over sine of um, angle B, 
you can also do so. Because remember, um, you can, um, well, any of these formulas can be used as long as you are consistent with um, if the sides are on the numerator. So for the others, for the, well, for the right side, so the side should also be in the numerator. Okay, or the other way around, if the angle is on the numerator, see to it that the other one has the angle on the numerator also. Okay, so this one, I'll just write it here. So this one, it can also be written as um, side B over sine of angle B equals to side C over sine of angle C. So this can be used, for example, um, for example, um, say that the small c, okay, side c is being asked, okay, and then you are given in the problem the measurement of side b, um, the measure of angle b, and the measure of angle c. So you can make use of this formula because you do have the pairing, small and big, okay, small and big letter, um, or side and um, the angle, okay, that is opposite, the said um, side. Okay. So we have here an example. So in this example, so given um, angle C that measures 102 degrees, angle B, which is 29 degrees, and then side B that measures 28 feet. So we are going to find the remaining angle and sides. Okay. So if you would like to draw this. Okay. Okay. So if you would like to draw this, so you can see on the right side on how the triangle will look like, okay? So the angle C is on the upper portion, okay? Here is angle C. This is the, this is um, actually, um, well, this is uh, vertex C with the corresponding um, angle. The angle is um, in between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So this is considered to be obtuse angle. And then we have B, so B is here, and it measures 29 degrees. And of course, if we're using the B and the C, so we do have an A here. By the way, um, it doesn't matter if you would like to, to have your B on here, but then just be sure with the measurement of the angle, okay? And then your A can be on the other side. So we have the measure of side B. So side B is 28 feet. So if you remember our discussion when it comes to the parts of the triangle, so it should be clear to you on how you are going to put the side. Remember that the side is opposite the vertex or it is opposite the angle. So if your triangle is like this in which you have your angle C here, Okay, this is your angle C, this is your angle B, and this is your angle A. If you're going to locate or, um, well, um, identify side B in your triangle, remember that side B is always opposite angle B. So if this is angle B, okay, the 29 degrees, this is your B, um, the side opposite it is this one. So you're going to label it. So this is your B that measures 28 feet. So in that case, so it means that if we are asked to find the remaining angle and sides, okay, so what do we need to um, solve in this problem? Of course, so if we have here... Um, vertex A, so opposite of it, we do have here side A, and also we have here the what? We have here um, the alpha, or we can say that this is our angle A. 
And then um, what else? So if we have here 102 degrees for um, angle C, so opposite of it, this is our side C. So the three parts of the triangle that we need to compute or determine the measurements are angle A. So we need to know what is A. We also need to know the measurements of um, side A and then C. Okay, so how are we going to solve this? So I will switch to the black screen. Okay, so remember that we do have the, the given. So the given are um, angle C that measures 102 degrees. We also have um, angle B that measures 29 degrees. We do have um, side B. So we have side B that measures, um, that is uh, 28 feet. Okay. So what do we need to solve? So we need to solve for, of course, what is missing with our ABC on angles are the big A. Okay, we need to solve for this. And then for the sides, we need to solve for the small A and the small C. Okay, sides A and C. These are the unknowns. Okay, so in using the law of signs, okay, so in using the love sign, so remember that for the law of signs, you can also see references um, in which you can uh, read sign law. Sign law. That is also another term. Okay, so for the law of signs, um, remember, so if you would like to use the formula in which the side is on the numerator, so well, you can make use of it. So remember that the law of sines is um, small a over sine of the angle A equals to um, the small b or side b over sine of angle B equals to um, side C over sine of angle C. Okay, so let us take a look at our given. So in our given, um, we have um, angle C, we also have angle B, and then we have side B, okay? So remember um, when we had the formula for the law of signs, um, you can make use of the formula if you have the pairing. Um, you're not going to use this um, three all at once. You're just going to make use of two. So for you to use two, okay, out of this three, be sure that you do have the pairing of the small and the big letters. So as what you can see, what we have here is the B and the C. Okay, so we can make use of this formula. So making use of the formula... Okay, so we have um, small b over, um, let us just write it on the right side. Okay, so we have a small b over sine of angle b equals to small c or side c over sine of angle c. Okay, so what we need here is side C, so we can compute for side C. Okay, so you have to first um, derive. So you have to derive the formula. Okay, so in deriving the formula, same as, same as what we did before. So whatever is the unknown, so it should be written on one side only. Okay, without any other terms. So in this case, so we can use cross multiplication. 
So as what you can see, so we have fractions on the left and the right. So we can simply cross multiply this. Um, if you would like, so you can, um, well, you can have multiplication of numerator and denominator, and then you can just have, um, well, division if it is applicable. OK, if it is applicable, but then if you are um, well, if if uh, if you know well how to cross multiply, so simply you're just going to what you're just going to multiply the denominator of your right side to the numerator of the left side. OK, so it will become B sine of angle C over sine of angle B. So this is when you only have the unknown side C on one side. OK, it is alone. So this can be your derived formula or you can also write it this way or you just um, well um, interchange the two. So we have um, side C equals to um, side B sine that is time sine of angle C over sine of angle B. OK, so any of these two can be the derived formula. OK. And then from the derived formula, you can already substitute. So in substituting. So you can substitute already. Let us just write it here. So since we have, since we have um, C equals to B times to sine of angle C over sine of angle B. So substituting our B measures 28 feet. And then you're going to multiply it with sine of um angle c that is 102 degrees divided by the sine of b that is 29 degrees okay so this means so you can use your calculator so with your calcul so you just um well so i hope that you already have your um natural display calculator so it will be easier for you to compute, especially if you do have fraction. OK, so in the calculator, so you just, um, well, you just consider the two, the two decimal places because remember, um, and, um, the side C here is considered to be a final answer because it is one of the unknowns, OK? So the answer is 56.4925. So that is 56.49. And then do not forget the unit. So it is feet. Why is it, why is it feet? Because C is side. Okay. And 56.49 feet is a measure of the length of side C. So that's it. OK, so we already have a measure for C. So the next thing that we are going to do. OK, um, we can already solve for either of side A or angle A. So I will be um, deleting the writings. So with uh, angle A and um, side A, if you try to look at the given, so we do have two given angles. And remember that a triangle has three angles with a sum of 180 degrees. So if you have two angles that are given, so it would be easier to solve for the other one. So remember, um, we have, I'll just um, clear this one. 
Okay. So again, always remember that A, angle A, angle B, and angle C, the sum is always 180 degrees. That is because these are the angles of a triangle. So if you can remember our discussion before, so even if you have a right triangle, um, an oblique triangle, an equilateral triangle, or whatever, um, the sum of the angles is always 180 degrees. Okay, so if we would like to solve for um, angle A, so we can already, well, we can already determine its measurement. So let us derive first. So the derived formula, always remember to have the derivation that is very impor uh, important. Um, it is better to derive the formula before you substitute so that uh, somehow your solution will be organized. Okay, um, so we need A. So if we need angle A, so it means that we can move B and C to the other side. So on, on the right side, so we have 180 degrees and then transposing B and C to the other side. So B will become... I know, so that is negative, as well as C, okay? Or another is um, you can have um, A equals to 180 degrees. You can move B plus C as a group, okay? Or you can move it together to the other side. So if it is together, so you have B plus C, and then just group it because it is together. And then do not forget the operation subtraction. Okay, so if you try to check, it is the same. So we do have here negative and then the B, so that is minus B, and the negative and a positive C, so that is minus C. Okay, next, we can already substitute. So 180 degrees minus our B is 29 degrees minus C of 102 degrees. If you would like to make use of the other formula, the A equals to... Um, equals 180 degrees minus the sum of B and C, you can do it. Okay. So what is our, um, well, our E here? Okay. So the measure of A is 49 degrees. That is A. So just do not forget to box your... Um, Final answer. So the same with the measure of um, side C um, a while ago. So you have to enclose it in a box so that it will be easier to identify which one is your final answer. Okay. So let us try to check. So that is 180 minus 29 minus 102. So 49 degrees. Okay. So next. Um, as what you can see, so we already have, um, we already have C a while ago, the small C a while ago, and then angle A also now. So what we need to solve is the side A. Okay. So if we need to solve for the side A, okay, let us go back to our, uh, law of signs formula. So this is our side A, and then we do have here angle A already. So um, angle A. So I hope that when you compute for the angle, you are sure, because simply you're just going to add the two angles and then um, deduct it from 180. Okay, and then we have um, the given side B. And then the given angle B. Okay, so it means that we can make use of this formula. Um, by the way, I would suggest that um, possible those who already have the idea um, with the law of sines and law of uh, cosine, sometimes they do use the two laws in a single problem. Um, my suggestion is that if you use the law of signs from the very start, you have to use it all the way. 
Okay, be consistent with the law that you are going to use. If you're going to use the law of cosines, which we are going to discuss later after, um, well, after the, the other subtopic, um, the same. So you have to be consistent in using it. So with a single problem, just use one law, either law of sine or you can use the law of cosine. Again, if you use the law of co if you use the law of signs from the very start, you have to use it until the end, until you complete the, um, well, until you're able to solve all that are being asked in the said problem. Okay. So if we are going to solve for side A, so we have A. So let us just copy the formula. So A over sine of angle A equals to side B over sine of angle B. Okay, again, what we need here is simply the side A. So it means that we are going to derive again. We are going to derive again the formula. So in deriving, um, in the law of uh, sines, the cross multiplication is, well, what is commonly used. So with cross multiplying, so we only need to transfer sine of angle A to the other side. OK, so it means that we have side A equals to side B times to sine of angle A over sine of angle B. You would notice that when we write the, the product of the side and the sine of the angle, it is better to write first the side, okay, B, before you write the sine of the angle so that you won't be confused um, when you already, um, well, when you already substitute and then have the computation um, possible when you input um, sign in your calculator and then the angle of A, then you're just going to multiply it with the measurement of B. So the measurement of B can be multiplied to angle A before then you can have the, the sign. OK, so that is what we are um, actually, uh, well, refraining to happen. So it is better that you write first the side, the side then followed by the other one which you are multiplying it with so the sign of the um the angle okay and then now you can already substitute so in substituting so a equals so we have b that is 28 feet Please write the unit in the solution, always. So 28 feet times sine of angle A, which is 49 degrees. So you have to double check your angle A because remember, this angle A is um, an answer which was solved a while ago um, considering the given. So if ever that the value or the measurement of your angle A is wrong here, then you're going to use it in the solution to find another part of the triangle. There is uh, a high possibility or a bigger possibility that the measurement of the part that you are solving would be incorrect. Okay, if the value that you are also going to use in the solution is incorrect. So you have to be sure with the, um, well, with the measurement. Okay. And then divided by sine of angle B, which is 29 degrees. Okay. So you can already input this in your calculator. So that is um, 28. So uh, multiplying with sine 49 degrees by the way just a reminder since we are um inputting angle in degree in your uh well in the calculator so you have to check the mode the mode of your calculator it should be in degree 
because if it is in region, so there will be, um, well, there will be difference in the answer. So 28 times sine of 49 degrees divided by sine of 29. And then do not forget to close or to put a close parenthesis because when you input in your calculator, sine automatic, there is an open parenthesis. You're going to input the measurement of the angle and then followed by the close parenthesis. You press the equal sign. Okay, so the result is 43.5879, 5879. So it means that side B measures uh, 43.59. Then the unit, since this is side, so it is fit. Then do not forget to enclose it in a box. Okay, so we're able to solve the three unknown parts of the triangle. The sides A and C and angle C. Okay. So now let us go back to the PowerPoint. So we have here another example. Okay. So this example, so we have the measure of side A that is 50 centimeters, angle A measures 60 degrees and angle B that measures 75 degrees. We are going to solve for side C and B. Okay, so two parts are being asked. So the measures of the two parts. So this is the illustration or the drawing of the triangle. So remember that you should have the correct labeling of the parts, especially the angles, because um, the angles and the vertex, because it is, um, well, from the said parts, we are going to base the sides. And the sides is, well, the side is always opposite the vertex or the angle. So as you can see, this is um, vertex A. And A measures, okay, angle A measures 60 degrees. And then opposite of angle A, we do have here side A that measures 50 centimeters. And then on the lower right, so we have here vertex B and the angle on it measures 75 degrees. So it means that this part of the triangle, this is our side B, which we need to solve and then um, also if this is um, vertex C so opposite of it we have here the side C which we also need to determine the measurement okay so let us uh, switch to the black screen okay so the given again are so we have side A that measures 50 centimeters. So this is side A. And then we also have two given parts, um, the big A and the big um, B. So these two big letters are the angles. So it means that we have angle A that measures 60 degrees and angle B that measures 75 degrees. Okay, so if you try to take a look at our given and unknown, so what we need to solve are well for the sides um what's missing are um side b and side c and then for the angle actually we don't need to solve for the angle but it, because it is not being asked in the problem but then um it would be better if you solve for it because possible, it is necessary, especially if, um, well, um, there is a possibility that you might need it in solving the unknown. Okay, so let us have the law of signs again. So the law of signs. So for the law of signs, so we have A, so small a over sine of the big A, or side A over sine of angle A 
equals to side B over sine of angle B equals to side C over sine of angle C. Okay, so let us take a look at the given. So the given are the small A or side A and then um, we have the big A or the angle A and we also have the big B or the angle B. Okay, so we can use this, this two, okay? We can use this two because we do have here three given parts and then one part is unknown, which is the side B. So we can solve for side B. So with the said formula, okay, so let us just rewrite it on the right side. So we have A over sine of angle E equals to side B over sine of angle B. Okay, and what we need is the um, side B. Okay, we need this one. So we need to derive the formula again. So derived formula, remember to Derive your formula for the unknown. Okay, so the derived formula for this, so you need to have B on one side alone. So it means that since um, it has um, sine of angle B on the denominator, you have to move this denominator to the other side, that is by cross multiplying. Okay. So it means that we're going to multiply um, sine of um, angle B with side A. But then remember that in writing this multiplication, you always need to start with the side. So we have side A times sine of angle B. As what you can see, no need to put the X or the dot or the open and close um, to, well, for for showing that this is multiplication because it is already understood but then if you would like to put the the dot or the open and close parentheses it is okay then divided by sine of angle a so equals to side b so this is the derived formula or if you would like you can um well just um interchange the two so we have b equals so a sine of angle b over sine of angle a okay so we can use this uh, formula already so let us substitute So this two are the um, derived formula. So let us use the second because B, the unknown is on the left side. So we have A sine of angle B over sine of angle A. So substituting, so in our given, our A is 50 centimeters, okay? Then multiply it with the sine of angle B that measures 75 degrees. Then you close it. And then divided by sine of angle A, it is 60. Okay, then you just use your calculator. So your answer is 55. 0.76. The unit of this is centimeters. Okay. So in your calculator, you just input. So remember, the mode is degree because we do have here um, trigonometric function. Okay. The, the sine of 75 degrees and sine of 60 degrees. So calculating. So we have 50 times sine of 75 degrees divided by sine of 60. So the answer in the calculator is, um, well, 25 square root of 6 plus 75 square root of 2 over 3. So since we are, um, well, we are um, solving for the measurement of the length, 
So what is better to use the decimal? So it is 55.76775358. So two decimal places. That is 55.77. It is 77. So let us just correct this one. So the measure of side B is 55.77 centimeters. Okay. So we already have the measure of side B. Okay. Now, we are going to solve for side C. But then same as what we did a while ago, um, as what you can see in the given. So we do have two given angles. So one angle is easier to, well, it's easier to determine its measure. So that is just by adding the two given angles and then subtracting it from the 180 degrees because the 180 is the sum of the angles of a triangle. Okay. So we can solve for the big C first because we are given two angles here, the A and the B. So remember that we have angle um, A plus angle B plus angle C equals to 180 degrees. And since we need to solve for, um, for angle C, so derived formula of this, although angle C is not being asked, but then um, remember that in the law of cosines, there should be pairing. So since we need to determine the measurement of side C, so its pair is angle C. So we need to determine first the angle C. But then, of course, since you are going to use the measure of angle C, um, you have to be sure with its measurement. Okay. Because if the value of angle C is wrong, and then you're going to use it in um, identifying the measure of side C using the law, of, the law of signs. So possible the measurement of side C will be wrong. So deriving the formula for angle C, so we have 180 degrees. So C equals to 180 degrees, and then we can transpose angle A and angle B on the other side. So that is uh, minus A and then minus B. Okay, or if you want, so this can also be, um, or this can also be C equals to 180 degrees minus, if you would like to transpose A and B together, so that is A and B together. So do not forget the grouping symbol, parentheses, and then since it is, well, the A and B are moved to the other side, so you should put the subtraction operation. Okay, now, so let us substitute. So substituting, so let us use the first one. So angle C equals to 180 degrees minus A minus B. So 180 degrees minus Angle E of 60 degrees minus angle B of 75 degrees. So the measure of our um, angle C is 45 degrees. Okay, so this is angle C. So we already have angle C, although it is not being asked in the problem. But you can also solve for it, especially if you would like to use it in determining side C. So let us um, double check. So 180 minus 60 minus 75, so 45 degrees. Okay, now, if we would like to solve for um, side C, so side C is um, here. So here is side C. So we already have what? Um, from the given, you always need to stick with a given. Always use the given, majority of the given as much as possible. Or, um, well, all, if ever. 
So we do have the given of side A. So side A is here. And then um, angle A is 60 degrees. And then we also have angle B. But since what we need is side C, so let us use angle C. Okay, we have here angle C. So that we can solve for side C. Okay, so the formula of this, the formula of this is, um, well, so we need to consider this. So we have, I'll just erase the lower portion. Okay. So again, so we have small a or side a over sine of angle a equals. So what you need are this two. Okay, this two. The a and the c. So we have equal c over sine of angle c. That's it. And then remember... So we need to derive the formula for um, side C. So in deriving, so we're just going to cross multiply again. So this um, denominator, the sign of angle C, so we can uh, cross multiply it or multiply it to the other side. So it will be multiplied to the numerator of the left side. So the derived formula the derived formula of this is, um, well, we have A times sine of angle C over sine of angle A equals to small c. That's it. Or you can also write it this way. So C equals it's C over sine of angle A. Okay, and then you can already proceed with substitution. So let us just erase the right side. Okay, so let us just rewrite. So C equals to A sine of angle C over sine of angle A. So substituting our A is 50 centimeters and then sine of angle C, our angle C a while ago is 45 degrees. So 45 degrees, that is 180 minus 60 degrees minus 75 degrees. And then dividing this by sine of angle A, so 60. You just write properly your um, equal sign. So let us put it um, in between. Okay. And then um, if you're going to um, compute for it, so the answer or the measure of side C is 40.82. 40.82 centimeters. This is side C. Okay, so let us just try to check the measurement. So using your calculator again, be sure that it is in degree mode. So you can um, press on the fraction if you are using the natural display calculator. So 50 times sine of 45 over um, sine of 60. So the answer is 50 square root of 6 over 3. But then since what we need is the length so we're going to consider the decimal form. So that is 40.82 centimeters. Okay, that's it. So let us go back to the PowerPoint. So by the way, with the examples under the law of sign, so we are very consistent with the use of the formula. Okay, so... Um, we use the law of sines formula, the A over sine A equals to B over sine B equals to C over sine C.
and then you're just gonna choose which pair or well which pair um, is actually applicable depending on the given and the unknown and then um, always remember that the sum of the three angles is 180 degrees so if ever that um, you are given two angles so it is easier to the to determine the measurement of the third angle just by adding the two angles and subtracting it from 180 degrees or um, 180 degrees minus the first angle minus the second angle. If ever that the two angles are not given or just one angle, okay, if only one angle is given, so you can make use of the law of signs in order for you to determine one of the angles. Okay, so let us have um, another example. So I'll just, uh, well, I'll just write it. So another example. So if we have angle A that measures 25 degrees. So this time we already have the degree and minute. And then um, we have um, side A that measures 95 and then side B that measures 22. So you can see that the sides here um, do not have unit, so it is okay. Um, it means that when you solve for the unknown side, um, it doesn't have unit also. Okay, so um, if ever that we would like to solve for B, for example. So B is being asked. OK, so what you can do with this? So remember that um, on the law of signs. So we have again A over sine of angle A, B over sine of angle B, C over sine of angle C. OK. And if you try to check the given, so we do have the given, the big A, the small A, the small B. And what is being asked is the big B. So what we need is this pair. OK, so let us just write it. So we have A over sine of angle A equals to B over sine of angle B. And what we need again is the angle. So angle B is the unknown. So here, the cross multiplication is still applicable if you are going to derive the formula. So derived formula. So what are you going to do with this? Okay, in the derived formula, so you can apply the cross multiplication. So cross multiplying. So we have here A times the denominator of the right side. So that is sine angle B equals um, side B, then multiply to the denominator of the left side. So that is sine of angle A. And remember what we need is B. We need the angle B. So it means that we are going to divide both sides by OK, we need to um, find a way how we can uh, transfer A to the other side. So since it is in multiplication, OK, under the operation multiplication with sine of angle B. So what you can do is divide. OK, so divide both sides by side A. So you can already cancel this. And then um, just, uh, well, write sine of angle B equals to B sine of angle A over side A. OK, we are not yet done because again, what we need is angle B. OK, so let us just write it on the upper portion. I'll just write it on the upper portion. So this one. OK, so this is not yet the derived. This is not yet the derived. I'm only marking this for um, I'll just use some um, circle. I'll just use circle. 
Okay. So, continuing, so we have sine of angle B equals to B sine of angle A over side A. So, again, what we need is B. So, if we need B or angle B, so remember with our um, discussion before, so if we are going to solve for the angle and we have um, well, the sine, cosine, or um, the others. Um, we can use the inverse. Okay, so we have sine here, so we can um, move it to the right side. So we have sine, then this negative one. This is read as arc sine, arc sine, and then copy the right side. So open and close parenthesis, B sine of angle A over side A. And this is the derived formula. This is already the derived formula. So derived formula is B equals to arc sine of B sine angle A over side A. Okay, and then once you are done with the derived formula, you can already substitute. So I'll just erase the other portions here. So we can already substitute. So we have B equals to arc sine of B, small b is 22, times 2 sine of A. Oh, let us just uh, rewrite it on the bigger space so that we can write the angle properly. Okay, so we have B arc sine. So B equals to arc sine of small b, so it measures 22. And then um, if you would like to put here the cross um, to, uh, well, as a symbol for the operation multiplication, you can do so. So times some um, sine of angle A, so that is uh, 25 degrees and 4 minutes over side A that measures 95. Okay, so you can just input it in your calc queue. So the answer is 5.63 degrees. Okay, so if you would like to write the DMS format of this, you can do so. Okay, so remember how you're going to input the sine 25 degrees for minutes in your calculator. So you can press the DMS, so sine 25 DMS for DMS, that's it. So this is the answer in this problem. If ever that um, you're going to solve for an angle, given just one angle only and then two sides, then possible the other parts, you can also try to solve for the other parts. So say if you would like to solve for um, angle C, Okay, angle C is easier to solve here since you already have the two angles, the A and the B. So just deduct this two from 180. And then um, after coming up with the measurement of angle C, you can solve for side C by still using the law of sines. Okay, so going back to the PowerPoint, so now we have the ambiguous case. So in the ambiguous case, so this is just to show you when, um, well, um, if given parts of the triangle, especially, well, the sides um, or the height, okay, the height or the altitude, um, how would you know if um, a triangle can be formed or not? 
So just like in this example, so when um, angle A is acute, when angle A is acute and then um, side A is uh, shorter than the height or the altitude, um, well, there can be no triangle formed, okay? Or no triangle can be formed. So when A is less than the height, um next also when um angle a is acute and the side a is equal in measurement with the height so um there can be one possible triangle and as what you can see in the illustration the triangle that can be formed is a right triangle another one so if Again, angle A is acute. So if side A is greater than or um, equal, okay, with side B, so there is one triangle that can be formed and it, it looks like this. It is an oblique triangle. It is an oblique triangle. And then... Another one, so when um, side A is, uh, well, longer or greater than the measurement of the height and less than or uh, shorter than the measurement of side B, therefore, there can be two triangles that can be formed, and you can see it in the illustration here. So there are two triangles. And another, when angle A is obtuse, so when angle A is obtuse, so having, um, well, side A less than or equal to side B, there will be no triangle, okay? There will be no triangle. As what you can see, A is very short than B. Then um, also when A is obtuse, so when uh, um, when the side A is greater than or longer than side B, there can be one triangle that can be formed. Okay, and the triangle is um, oblique. Okay, it is oblique. So same with the triangle a while ago. So the third one, this is also oblique. The second one is right triangle. That is for the ambiguous case. So there are six ambiguous cases. Then now let us have the law of cosine. So for the law of cosine, so we do have these formulas. So the same, so um, side A, so we do have the sides. Um, the sides are A, B, and C. We do use the small letters. And then for the angles, so we have the big A, the big B, and the big C. So for the law of cosines, it is said here that um, the square of side A is equal to the sum of the squares of side B and side C minus the product of two and um, the two sides and the cosine of angle A. Another uh, formula, so that is when B is on the left side, so we do have B squared. So you will notice that there is a pattern here. There is a pattern. So you're just gonna uh, um, replace the letters. So if, if A is on the left side, so you also have A on the, well, on the left, uh, on the rightmost, on the rightmost, um, as an angle for the cosine. So if you have B here on the left side, you can also see um, angle B on the rightmost. So same with the side C. Okay. So you can see the pattern. So if you're going to memorize the formula for the law of cosines, it is better to memorize just one formula. And then uh, for the other two, you can just, um, well, you can just replace the letters. Let us have the example. 
So for the example, um, so side A is 11, and then uh, side B is 23, and then angle C is 60. Okay, so what is being asked here is side C. So let us solve for this. So if we are going to solve, okay, so we have um, A, so A, B, so A is 11, B is 23, then side C is unknown, and then we have angle C that is 60 degrees, okay. Always remember, if in the law of signs, we always have the pairing, okay. In the law of signs, always remember, so in the law of signs, in the law of signs, we always have the pairing. So, for example, if you have a big A, you have the small A. If you have a big B, you have a small B. Or if you have um, A and C, okay? So, you can use the law of signs. For the law of cosines, what you need to remember here is that the A, B, and C are given. What do I mean by that? Um, the A, B, and C, whatever is the combination, whether small or big, as long as um, the three are given, okay, for example, just like this one. So we have um, we have so we have um, A. So A is given, we also have B is given, and then the big C is given. So you can see that the three are what? Are uh, present here, A, B, C. Unlike with the law of signs, when you're going to use it, there are two or there are letters that can be repeated. So A and A, B and B, or you can have C and C, and then um, another given is um, a small B. So it means that you are going to solve for the big B or the angle B. For the law of cosines, so the three A, B, and C should be given regardless of whether small or big. Okay, so I'll just um, erase this portion. So in the problem, so it is said that we are going to solve for the small C, okay? So for the small c, so we have um, the formula. Um, we can use the c squared equals to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. This is what we can use. So we have to derive. Remember what we need is only c. So we have to derive. So the derived formula of this, so you're going to get rid of the power 2. So that is by what? So that is by extracting the square root. That is 2ab cosine of c, so you can extract the square root. Okay, so cancel, so you have c equals to the square root of a squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C. And this is the derived formula. Okay, so with this derived formula, you can already substitute. So let us have the, uh, the black screen. So A is 11, B is 23, and then C is 60. Okay. So with the derived formula, so we have C equals the square root of A squared plus um, B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C. So remember that we do have the given um, A equals to 11, B is 23, and then the big C that measures 60 degrees. Okay. So let us substitute. So C equals to the square root of. Um, it is better that you write first the open and close before you substitute so that you will not forget anything. Okay. 
So A measures 11. So A is 11, B is 23, and then 2A is 11 also, B is 23, cosine of 60 degrees. That's it. Then you can also, you can already use your calcule. So the answer is square root of 397, uh, square root of 397. So since we need the length. So in decimal, that is 19.92. That is the answer. So on the, um, the second example here, so we have um, the measures of side A. B and C, and then we're going to determine the angles A, B, and C. So we're writing. So we have A of 1.42, B is 0 0.75, and then C is 1.25. So these three are all sides. So the A, B, and C are um, given, so we can use the law of cosines here. And we're going to solve for angle A, angle B, and then angle C. And then um, in order to solve for any of this three first, so um, let's say that we would like to solve for the angle A. So with the three formulas of the law of cosine, so the one with the angle A is, um, well, the formula in which we have side A on the left side. So it is A squared equals to B squared plus C squared minus um, 2BC cosine of angle A. So since we need angle A, so we have to derive the formula for for this, so the derived formula for this, so since we have a negative here, um, actually, um, if you try to look at the, the formula, this is actually um, considered to be one, okay? This is actually a whole. So we can move it to the left side for it to be positive and then the A squared to the right side so that, um, well, um, it can, we can only have um, the term with the big A on the, the left side. So we have, we have 2BC cosine of angle A, okay? Then on the right side, we have B squared plus C squared. And then this A squared, so we have to move it to the right side. So minus A squared. That's it. And then, um, since what we need is um, the angle A only, and knowing that this two, this two are together, so we can remove or we can get rid of 2BC um, by dividing because the operation on the left side is multiplication. So, in order for us to remove the 2BC here, we can divide. So divide both sides by 2BC. Okay, and then we can already cancel. So after um, writing, so we can already cancel this. Okay, and then after we cancel, so we already have here cos of angle A equals 2B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Okay, next, we can already what? We can already have A only, so by applying the inverse. So continuing, we have angle A equals to R cosine of uh, B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. That's it. Okay, so this is our derived formula. Again, this is the derived formula, this one. So derived formula. So now we can already substitute. 
So in substituting, so we have um, angle A equals to R cosine. So B, let us just put it here. With the parenthesis first, then just um, insert the values. Okay. So our B is um, 0.75. And then C is 1.25, A is 1.42, then B is 0.75, and then C is uh, 1.25. That's it. And then you can already have the value for A. So you have to input it in your calculus, so be sure that it is in, um, well, um, you can have the degree mode so that the measurement of your angle A will be in degree. Okay. So that is our cosine of the fraction. So we have 0.75 squared plus 1 point, um, that is 1.25 squared minus 1.42 squared over 2 times 0 0.75 times 1.25. Then you close it. Okay, so the answer is 86, 86.679. So that is 0 0.68. And then since this is angle, this is a big letter, so the unit is degree. Okay, that's it. So we already have a value for E, so that is um, 86.68 degrees. So you can also do the same for angle B, and then for angle C, um, well, you can just subtract the two angles from 180. So let us have um, angle B. So angle B, okay, so let us um, delete this. So that we can have enough space. Okay. So if we need to solve for angle B, so we can use the formula with side B on the left side because it has the capital B or the big B under the law of cosines. So that is um, B squared equals to A squared plus C squared minus um, 2AC cosine of angle B. So remember, we need a big B. So for the derived formula of this, so you're just going to do the same as what we did a while ago in solving for the angle A. So again, um, this portion, this portion is considered to be a whole. This is actually one term. Okay, that is one term. So we can just move it to the left side. So for it to become positive, so that is positive 2AC cosine of angle B equals then copy the right side so we have e squared plus c squared and then the b squared we can transpose it to the right side so it will become minus b squared okay so the same with what we did a while ago with the uh, big a or the angle a so the cosine of b so this is actually um well this is uh one term so we can get rid of the two ac so the operation here is multiplication. So for us to do that, so we can divide both sides by 2AC. So 2AC. And then with that, we can already cancel 2AC on the left. So giving us, giving us cosine of angle B equals 2, a squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. 
Okay. Now, so since we need angle B, okay, since we need angle B, and as what you can see, so it has cosine. So the cosine, it can be moved or it, it can be written on the other side um, in which it will become R cosine, R cosine of A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. That's it. And this is our derived formula already. That is the derived formula. And with the derived formula, you can already substitute. So we have B equals to R cosine. Okay. So we have open close squared plus open close squared minus open close squared over 2 open close open close. It is better to write it this way first before you substitute so that you, um, you will not forget um other uh, other parts especially um the exponent the operation so um you won't have such a uh, mistake okay then um you can already um input the values so we have um a so a is uh, 1.42 C is 1.25, B is 0 0.75. On the denominator, A is 1.42, and then C is 1.25. Okay, so let us um, input it in our calcul. So B equals. Okay, so in the calcul again, so um, you can use the degree mode. So our cosine of the fraction 1.42 squared. That's 1.25 squared minus 0.75 squared over 2 times 1.42 times 1.25. Then close it. So the answer is 31.8220. So that is 31.82. Since we solve for angle B, the unit of this is degree. That's it. And then um, to solve for the angle C, you just write it here, the angle B, 31.82. So to solve for angle C, so you can just, um, well, you can just use the A plus B plus C equals to 180 degrees. Okay. Or if you would like, you can still use the formula. If you would like to use the formula, so it will be the same. Uh, same process as this one. But then if I were you, um, since you already have two angles here. Um, that is, if you are sure with your angles A and B. If you are not sure with your angles A and B, you make use of the given um, sides A, B, and C, and then the formula of the law of cosines. Make use of the third formula, if you are sure. Uh, brother, if you are not sure of your uh, values for the angles. But if ever that you feel you are correct, so you can just add the two angles and subtract it from 180. So that is, um, well, so we need the C. So C equals to 180 degrees minus A minus B. So substituting. So we have um, A of 86.68 degrees and then B of 31.82 degrees. So what would be our answer? So that is 180 minus 86.68 minus 31.82. So the answer is 61.5. 61.5. Or 61.50 degrees. That's it. Okay, next. For the application, so the application of the oblique is also on the bearing. 
So a cruise uh, ship travels at a bearing of 45 degrees at 15 um, miles per hour. So that is for three hours and then um, change the course to a bearing of 120 degrees. It then travels 10 miles per hour for two hours. Okay. So what are we going to find? So the distance of the ship from its original position and then as well as the bearing. It's bearing from the original position. Okay. So if we are going to draw it, so it will look like this. Okay. So. So this is the original position. So from the problem. So this is the first position of the ship. So according to the problem, um, it traveled. So travels at a bearing of 45 degrees at 15 miles per hour for three hours. Bearing of 45 degrees. So if you can still remember how to draw. OK, so these are the directions on so north. We have here west. We have here the south and then when we have here the east. So if we are um, going to uh, to draw the bearing of 45 degrees, so always remember you always have here the north, OK, on the upward and then um, the measurement of 45 degrees. So it is actually from the north and then um, it is clockwise. So you're going to measure 45 degrees here. OK, and then you're going to draw a line. So we draw, um, well, so after measuring 45, we're going to draw a straight line. And then this straight line, you have to extend it because it will be one side, OK, of your triangle. So actually, this um, straight line, this is the path um, that is, um, well, um, in which the ship travels, OK? So this is the path. So you're just going to draw a straight line here. OK, then you're going to stop here. This is another point. But then before you complete this point, you have to determine or identify what is the length of this side or this line. OK, which is um, actually the distance traveled from uh, the distance traveled by the ship from its original point going to the other point. So um, in the problem, so it is um, it was said that the ship uh, traveled um, well with a speed of um, that is a uh, 15 miles per hour. OK, for three hours. So for three hours, so it means that if it traveled for three hours with a speed of 15 miles per hour, so that is 15 times three. So we have 45 miles. That is the distance from this point up to this point. And then also in the problem. So it changes. So with the changes, uh, with the change in the course, so that is another point. So a bearing of 120 degrees in which it travels for 10 miles per hour for two hours. OK, so let us go back here. So at this point, so the same. So you're going to um, well, you're going to draw the bearing. So. So this is the north. So at this point, so you have the north, the west, the south and then the east, and then you have to draw the 120. The 120 degrees, OK? So the 120 degrees here. Um, this uh, should be 120. This should be 120 degrees. OK, so from the north, you're going to measure 120 degrees clockwise. OK, clockwise. And then with that measure of 120 degrees, or so you're going to put a straight line again. OK, then put the measure of 120. And then with a straight line, so you're going to put another point here because um, this is the end 
of um, the travel of the ship from this point up to this point in which the ship uh, travels for um, well so that is um, having um, a speed of 10 miles per hour for two hours okay so it means that the distance is 10 miles times two so we have 20 miles so that is the distance traveled by the ship okay and then with the question so what is the distance of the ship from its original position as well as its bearing so it means that um, you're going to determine the distance from this point up to this point so that is the y miles so that is what is being asked okay as well as you need to determine what is the bearing of the ship from its original position okay so if you're going to look at the problem so let us uh, solve first for the distance before we solve for the berry okay for solving for the distance so remember um possible in the problem um you do not have the idea if the problem is um well if you're gonna consider a right triangle or an oblique triangle it is for you to find out so um what are you gonna do so the same with our uh, bearing problem under the right triangle so what we need um we we checked first if the triangle is right so it means that we have to identify if there is um, a 90 degree angle in the triangle so that is what we did before we solve so in this one we need to check if this one is um oblique because this is under the topic of oblique triangle so it means that um well remember that an oblique triangle so we do have two general forms the first one um all angles are acute or another one the second one is one angle is obtuse okay so it it only means that an oblique triangle doesn't have a right angle that's all so if there is no right angle here therefore it is oblique okay so what are we going to do with this so since um well so since we have here um uh, an angle of 45 degrees and then this one we do not know as well as this one we also do not know so let us go to this um second point here okay in this second point we are given an angle of 120 degrees Okay, so if this is 120 and we do have here, uh, well, if we're going to extend this portion on the south, okay, on the south, so we know that from north going to south, the measure is 180. Okay, so from north, the north to south, this is 180 degrees. So if we have here 120, so it means that this portion Okay, this portion, I'll just um, erase this. Okay, so it means that, um, well, so it means that this portion, this one, this measures what? So that is uh, 180 degrees minus the given 120. So we do have your 60 degrees. And that 60 degrees is this one. Okay, next. So we already know the 120, the 60. This one here, you can remove this. Okay, next. So in the triangle, so we have this portion. Okay, so with this portion, what are we going to do? So what are we going to apply here? What can be applied here? Um, as what you can see, so if you can remember the alternate interior angles, in the alternate interior angles, um, I'll just use the green one here. Okay, in the alternate interior angles, so if you have two lines and then you have a diagonal, 
you have a diagonal. So the angle, the angle, um, the angle here is also the same as the angle on this portion, and then the other way around. Okay. Vice versa. This one is also the same as this one. So if we're gonna take a look at this, so we have here a line, the north south line, the north south line, and then we also have here the north south line. Okay, so with this north south line, we are given here 45 degrees. 45 degrees. And then this one is also 45 degrees. So it is very clear that these two are alternating. Why are they alternating? Remember, so if this is 45, opposite of it is also 45. Okay. And if this is 45, um, on the other side of on the other side of the line, so we also have 45 degrees here. Same with this portion. This is also 45 degrees. This whole, this one. Okay, only up to the well, up to this line. Okay, so that is also 45. So again, so where did this 45 came from? It is by considering the concept of alternate interior angles. So if we have 45 here, since this is the given, so if we have the here two lines, so with a diagonal opposite of the line on the other side, it is also 45 degrees. That's it. And then you try to check what is the angle of this. So from, from the 45 and the 60, okay? So from the 45 going to 60, so this measures 105 degrees. And 105 degrees is not a right angle. It is not 90 degrees. Therefore, this triangle is oblique. Okay, now, since this is oblique triangle, so we can already make use of the, the concepts a while ago on how we are going to compute for this. Okay, so as what you can see, so we can already um, label. Okay, so in labeling, um, we can um, say we have here point A and then the second uh, point before it changes its course, the ship changes its course. So this is the B and then this point is the C. Okay, this is C. So let us label this. So if this is um point A, so 20 is side A. Okay, 20 is side A. And then 45 is opposite um the vertex or point C. So this is point C. Uh this is side C rather. This is side C. And then if this is point B, opposite of it is the unknown. So this is our B. So we can solve for side B. So let us uh, switch to the black screen. Okay. So we do have the given. So we have the given um, the side A measures 20 miles. And then um, side C, it measures 45 miles and then we have um angle b so angle b is the 60 degrees and 45 degrees so so that is 60 degrees for plus 45 degrees which is 105 degrees okay and what we need to solve is side b this is what we need to solve Okay, now, with our discussion a while ago, so you, you take a look at the given. So the given is complete. We do have the A, B, and C. It is complete. No repetition of letter. So what we can use here is the law of cosines. And for the law of cosines, 
So since we have b here, so we can use the b squared equals to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. That's it. Next. So with this formula, so we can um, have the derived. So for the derived formula, so you just have to get rid of the power. So that is b. So extract the square root. So b squared, uh, b equals to the square root of a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. Okay, next, you can already substitute. So in substituting, so you just rewrite it. So open close squared um, plus open close, uh, open close squared minus 2 open close. Open close cosine of open close. Or you can just write the angle there. Okay. So let us um, write or input the values. So A is 20 miles. Um, C is 45 miles. Then we have 2. A is 20 miles. C is 45 miles, and then cosine of B, that is 105 degrees. Okay. And then, so you just use your calc. So with your calc, so that is some um, square root of 20 squared plus 45 squared minus um, quant. You can use parentheses if you like, but since it is multiplication, so by following the the PEMDAS. So we have 2 times 20 times 45 times cosine of 105. Close it. Okay. So the measure of side B is 53.7. 668. So that is 53.77. And since side B is um the distance from well the distance or the distance traveled by the ship from its original uh position, so we're gonna use the unit of mile. Okay, so we can see that the ship um is 53.77 miles away from its original position. Okay, so that is the answer on letter A. Now, let us go back to the PowerPoint and then let us solve for the bearing. For the bearing, okay, for the bearing, remember that when we discussed about the bearing application on, um, well, con um, considering right triangle, so you always have to take note of the keyword, this clue from. So it means that from the said point or on the said point, we're going to measure the bearing. Okay, we're going to measure the bearing. So let us go to the illustration. So if we're, you are going to measure the bearing or determine the bearing of the ship from its original position, Okay, so this is the original position. And this is um this is the 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 path. Okay. Or this is actually the the side of the triangle that we are considering because it is um where we can find the the distance of the the ship from this point, okay, to its original position. So it means that the, that the bearing that we are going to determine is actually from the north, okay, on this original position, from the north going to the said line, okay? So the same concept of bearing, same as what we discussed before. So from the north and then... um. Determine the angle clockwise direction towards this line that connects this point and this point. That's it. Okay. So as what you can see, we already have here 45 degrees. So it means that the bearing here, okay, the bearing 
is what? Equals to 45 degrees plus this unknown x, plus the x theta. Okay, so that is the bearing. So how are we going to solve for this? So it means that in order to solve for this, we can first consider the oblique triangle. In the oblique triangle that we have, so we have here the angle of x theta. So we can determine first the angle A. After determining angle A, that's the time that we can um, add it with the 45 degrees so that we can have the bearing. Okay. Let us um, go back to the black screen. Okay. So again, um, we have uh, the given, okay, from our uh, oblique triangle, from our illustration, that side A measures 20 miles, side C measures 45 miles, okay, and then um, angle B measures 105 degrees. And then um, what we need this time is um, angle A. It is um, what we need. Because angle A, this is our, this is our x raised to zero. If you do not like to make use of the x raised to zero, you can just use um, angle A on the uh, triangle, okay, in the triangle. So since we need angle A, so what can be used here? Okay, so we have here the A, B, and C. So we're able to solve for um, for side B a while ago. So side B, based on our uh, solution a while ago, so side B measures um, 53.77 miles. So the decimal of this, So for the decimal, this is actually 53.76685 miles. Um, why am I writing this one? Um, for the final answer, you can use two decimal places. But then if you're going to make use of an answer as part of the solution, you use four to five decimal places so that there will be less um, error on the, um, on the value of the unknown that you are computing. Okay, so somehow your answer will be close to the real answer or to the to the right answer. Okay, so with this one, so we can use here again the law of um, cosines. Okay, so for the law of um, cosines, um, we have to determine angle um, A. So law of cosine, so we have um, A squared equals 2, B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of angle A. Again, you need angle A. So you're going to do the same um, derivation of formula as what we did um, in the examples a while ago. So derive formula of this. So transfer the negative 2BC cos A to the other side, so it will become positive. And then on the right side, we have B squared plus C squared. The A squared will be written on the right side. It will become negative, so minus A squared. And then you can divide both sides again by 2BC. Again, same procedure. Then you can already um, cancel the 2BC. So it means that what will be um, written on the left side is the cos of angle A. Then on the right side, we have B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And since we need um, angle A, so cosine to be written on the right side, it will become R cosine. Copy the right side, so B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Close it. And this is the derived formula. And then you can already substitute. So in substituting, so let us just erase this portion. So...
So I'll just rewrite it. So e, um, that is a, e equals to r cosine of b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. So let us um, now substitute. So remember before you substitute, so you should have first the open and close. You copy the, the exponent or the power so that it will be easier for you to input the values. Okay, so B is 53.7. You use the, the decimal places, the four to five decimal places. I'll just correct it. So 0.76685. You include the unit. And then, so that is 53.76685 miles. You write here the MI. And then C is 45 miles. And then A is 20 miles. On the denominator, we have two times B. B is 53.76685. 76685 miles. Let us close this. Then input the C, which is 45 miles. That's it. And then you use your calc. So let us compute. So again, um, calc is in degree mode. So that you can have an answer in degree also. So R cosine of the fraction, so 53.76685 squared plus 45 squared minus 20 squared over 2 times 53.76685 times 45. So the answer is 21.0573. So that is 21.0573 is 0, 06. This, this angle is in degree. That's it. So the answer is... 21.06 degrees. That's it. Okay. And then, that is for angle A only. Um, since in the problem, we need to solve for the bearing. Okay. So, what is the bearing? So, in the problem, the bearing is, again, 45 degrees plus the X um, degree. Remember that your X degree is A. So you're just going to substitute. So that is um, 45 degrees plus the answer on angle A, that is 21.06 degrees. So therefore, your bearing, your bearing is... So bearing, so that is 45 plus 21. So that is um, 66, then decimal of 0, 06 degrees. Um, okay, so 66.06 .06 degree. Um, degree. So if we are going to write this, um, actually, if we're going to convert it, so that is 45 plus 21.06. So in degree, minute, and second, that is 66 degrees and um, 3 minutes and 36 seconds. So we can also write it. I'll just um, erase this portion.
Okay, so this means that the bearing, that the bearing is, um, so remember that it should be three digit. So we have zero, six, six. That is a bearing. Or we can also say that the bearing is um, north 66 degrees um, east. We can also say it that way. But then since it is understood that this that this bearing is from the north and then um, clockwise, so we can just write it as 066 degrees. Okay, and this is the answer. Okay, so that's it. That's um that ends the discussion for the oblique triangles. Okay, thank you.